So I just got done reading Moneyball by Michael Lewis. Moneyball is a story of statistics, Billy Bean, and the Oakland A's as they try and take on the New York Yankees in a David and Goliath struggle over the statistical game and scouting of baseball. So if you didn't know, there is a betting in America called fantasy baseball or fantasy football or whatever you have, where you bet on the statistics of the player of the game. I'm not familiar with it myself, but I think it has something to do with, like, you bet on a batter, every time they hit the ball, it gives you one point. Every time the pitcher throws a strike, you get a point. Every time it gets someone to strike out, you get, like, three points. And at the end of the year, whoever gets the most points gets the money in the pot. I think it goes something like that. So, with this betting in mind, a lot of people are encouraged to look at the stats of players and figure out an efficient way to predict who's going to hit the most balls, who's going to hit the most home runs, who's going to do best. So then you form a team from however many players on however many teams, and however good they do during the season, you get the money if you get the most points. Bill James found out that the statistics being released by the Baseball Commission was not that good at predicting players. He found that all the statistics he found assumed that the game was man versus man. He looked at the game as man in circumstance versus other man in circumstance. And he started to do things like draw a grid on the baseball field to see if a batter could control where the ball goes, if position matters towards the number, if there are specific spots where it's like always guaranteed that someone's going to have a little bit more action. Obviously, like first baseman is a good example. He started to look with scrutiny at what statistics were more likely to help a team win a game. And from those numbers, he came up with a much more efficient method of figuring out who was going to win, called sabermetrics. This could obviously be used by teams to make a more efficient team overall. You can play fantasy baseball and pick from a wide variety of teams and put them all into one team if you use this method. And Billy Bean of the Oakland A's was the first to do it. Now, something about the New York Yankees and something about the Oakland A's. The New York Yankees have a ton of money. They basically can throw as much money as they want to get someone on their team. The Oakland A's have very little money. So they need to pick discount players or players that really do their role well. They need to get a great value for their buck. So Billy Bean, in a uh, desperate need to get players for cheap, looked at Bill James's methods and compared them to traditional scouting. He found that traditional scouts focus on the following. How well a person runs, which is how he was scouted, he was a former player. How well a person throws, how well a person hits the ball, how much power they can put into the hit, aka if they can hit home runs, and how well they can play in the field. They also look to see if someone has a TV face, if they, ha if they look like a player. And all this came down to the scout's individual judgment for each person. They would basically drive from field to field to look at them. So Billy Beans, general manager of the Oakland A's, decided to take Bill James's statistical approach, put it in a machine, and compare it to the average scouting method. He found that the machine was better at predicting success than the stereotypical scout way. In fact, allegedly he looked at the scouting way and said, so you're mostly scouting for bodies then? I think Michael Lewis says it's almost as if the scout saw a tall person and started to swoon. When the statistics was brought before other people in the institution, they had become a closed system. They had stopped accepting information from the outside. They're like, what do you know about baseball? All of us here are former baseball players or professionals. Why the hell should we listen to you? This is just statistical nonsense that nerds look at. So Billy started to use this method to evaluate the strengths of players in their specific roles, so that way they wouldn't have any of their weaknesses get in the way. Something like a batter who's 35 who can't hit it out of the park, but they have such great accuracy and they know everyone in the league, so they actually like know the pitchers and can predict them. So they won't be able to hit home runs, but they will be able to consistently hit the ball and just get to a base. So they won't do any harm to the team. And if they can play in the outfield really well, then they're a great person on the team. Things like pitchers who could only throw 88 miles per hour fastballs, 92 to 94 is kind of what you want. But this 88 mile per hour pitcher is really deceptive to the point where his ball it has a higher success ratio than anyone else statistically. And he had to find people like this, people with better numbers than you could find through traditional scouting. This led him to college. A lot of people went to high school because... 
the athletes are younger, they're more likely to be paid less, they have less damaged bodies, they're in their prime. If you're looking for someone who is going to be, like, stronger or more powerful, it's chances are it's going to be, like, a high schooler, barely 18. However, if you're looking for data and proof of success that's gone over time, then college is better. You have a larger track record. Using these statistical methods, Billy Bates was able to put together one heck of a team in order to try and get to the playoffs, even with a tiny little budget. Players who were completely dismissed end up being his top choice. And he managed to get, I think, more players than anyone else out of the draft that he wanted. But that isn't the majority of the story. The majority of the story is the personal stories of Billy Bates as he throws phones at walls and goes on temper tantrums in order to try and bully or browbeat people into doing what he said to go against institutional knowledge. The real story is each player who he brings and their personal story. The real story is the Oakland A's trying their hardest with this misfit team to get to the playoffs and challenge the undisputed champions. And that story, that I'm not going to ruin for you here. If you're interested in something like this, then I recommend Moneyball by Michael Lewis. And I will see you soon. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the stats. Give me some two hitting tricky pitching. Get rid of RBI, let the game begin. Take me out to the ball game.